quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. The Treaty of Maastricht, signed in 1992 by 12 European nations, set the stage for the European Union. The British joined the Union, but kept their currency, the pound sterling. Recently, in 2020, the Brexit Treaty was signed, marking the United Kingdom's departure from the EU. The Brits never did give up the pound sterling, and we'll never give up our sterling either. Let's learn why. Howdy folks, and welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters, and welcome to 2021, a year which promises to be every bit as exciting as 2020, it would seem. So thanks for joining us, and we are going to look at one of our favorite typewriter models, and that is the Smith Corona Sterling. So let's just take a look at this Sterling, which is a 5AX, a Super 5, if you will, uh, from Smith Corona, and this is from 1963. And we will get ready to give you a look at this. It's custom painted. It's got sort of a Neapolitan look to it with cream, pink, and the original Dawn Gray. All right, so you notice first and foremost, we've got nice gleaming white keys. We've got a full keyboard with a dedicated... Pink. A dedicated pink ribbon cover, yes, but a dedicated what, Kevin? A dedicated number one. Number one and a plus equals over on the right-hand side. And where do we set our tabs? up in the front on the set and clear which is an advanced uh, feature set now what you may be thinking of is that the uh you may be thinking well that looks a heck of a lot like a silent super and you would be absolutely right because this is really the modern if you will incarnation of the silent super it has all the features top of the line billing of the silent super but it has been updated for the modern era with white keys uh, from the original green or brown keys on the silent supers and uh, the same feature set with a tab on, set and clear on the front. You've got your ribbon color selector on the, the right-hand side. Some folks call these three diamond machines because there's three diamonds here. And uh, just about all the features you can want. Um, I really like the Silent Supers, but I like these, I think, just a tiny bit more. Uh, if they had made this in the desert tan color, I might uh, just be overjoyed. Um, but they made it in three colors, as I mentioned. They made it in dawn gray, star mist blue, and spring green. And the spring green ones are kind of funny because they are absolutely avocado. I'm not sure where the spring comes from, but maybe spring in the uh, California coastline. Maybe it was made in spring. Maybe it was made in the spring, could be, and then throughout the rest of the year. But we have taken this uh, dawn gray one, which had some scuffs, and decided that we would reinvigorate it by giving it a new paint job, making it pink and white and gray and cream. And I'm really thinking of ice cream right now. We're going to have to break down and get some when we're done with this review. All right, let's take a look at the inside of this machine, or at least the feature set. Always our carriage return lever. We have our uh, platen here. Uh, if you pull this knob out, you can get into freewheeling mode on your platen. You push it back in, it locks in, engages the ratcheting. You have line select here a one, a two, and a three. With this lever here, you have a carriage release arm. This was the last bit of the metal carriage release arms. After this variant, they went to the plastic ones in the Super Sterling model. Uh, and I find those not nearly as robust as these old fashioned, if you will, chrome plated metal ones. I always like these because they do not break unless they get severely impacted. Uh, we have a paper support TV antenna. Yeah. Our head on the back, yeah. And we press and slide here to set your margins. We have our paper bale with rollers. Uh, of course, the Silent Supers had a paper bale and paper fingers. So you kind of had a belt and suspenders approach to keeping your paper. You have access to your tabs, but you don't really need them back here. This is kind of a holdover uh, because in the old Silent Supers, they had uh, tabs. The very first version you could actually set and the old Sterlings as well. Uh, continuing on around, we have our quick release platen, which is always nice. You just uh, come over here, move your platen over to the side, carriage over to the side, I should say, press this lever here after opening the back. 
and you can remove your platen. I'll leave this one in just for grins for now. And moving our carriage back to the center, let's go ahead and take you take a look at under the hood. Kevin, you can show them that. All right, nicely done. So we have our ribbon spools, of course. Our ribbon reverse mechanism is here. There's a, a grommet you can actually see if we get just the right angle. Did you pick that up? Okay, well, trust me, it's there. There's a grommet. This grommet engages this fork. When that fork is pulled, it reverses the direction that the ribbons are rotating. Uh, you can see it's going this way now, but if we were to pretend that we triggered this as we type, it should reverse and then switch to this way, which it did. Yeah, it's working. Hey. Our serial numbers are always over here on the side. This is a 5AX181. <coughs> Bless you, Kevin. 181543. Uh, and that means that this is a 1963 model. I think I said that at the beginning. One of the things you'll notice is you get a little bit of rubbing from time to time. There's a little game you play with these machines once you take them apart of trying to make these corners fit just right. And you end up with a little tiny bit of scraping and sometimes when you set these down you have to push in. That's another little trick. Push in right dead center and it will click very nicely. It's kind of like whenever a part of your fingernail kind of digs into your skin. I hate that. Yeah, I think everybody does. Okay, so over here on this side, we have our page gauge, which I think I've forgotten to mention a couple times. Can you zoom in on that, Kevin? There you go. Great job. Oh. Zoom out. Zoom in. All right. So it's uh, end and set. And the idea here is you would uh, put this at the 11 when you first inserted your page paper and then uh, and roll it through. And as you start typing, it will count down for you on the left how many page uh, inches remaining. So we have one inch remaining or two inches, and we get down to one inch and then you're pretty much done. So that's just a fun feature that you can use. Of course, you've got your ruler. One other little trick, if you like wonder, uh, what's, the, what's the typeface on this machine? It goes from zero to a little over 80, 85, really 90, Oof. I guess. And that will tell you that you have a pica typeface, 10 characters per inch, as opposed to an elite. So if it's up to 100 or more, you have an elite 12 character per inch typeset. All right, that's pretty much a quick and dirty overview of the machine. And we'll get set up and do a typing test for you and see what you think about that. All right, so we've loaded up two sheets of paper, as you can see here, because it's always helpful to have two sheets of paper with these older machines because the platens have hardened up and it helps cushion the impact of the, uh, of the typewriter when you're typing, of the uh, type flex. So Kevin had an observation about these little diamonds before we get started on the type test over here. You can we'll go ahead and zoom in on them a little bit. What do you think about those diamonds, Kevin? Um, they look like the crystals that hold the creativity you put in the machine. All right. Kind of like power crystals or something. Yeah, kind of like the dark crystal, if you will. Anyone remember that movie by uh, Jim Henson? And uh, we'll go from there. So let's get started. The uh, quick round box jumps, swoops, jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. The J okay. had a little problem, but... Yeah, I got my fingers stuck. I was not in a good typing position, so we had a little space there, but not a skip, I promise. Some of the Royals do have a skips on the QDLs, but the Smith Corona Sterlings, they're almost absolutely bulletproof for skipping. I've only had one machine that actually had a skipping problem, and that was being used by a guy who was a very heavy-handed typist, and we made an adjustment for it to help that by delaying the trip. But anyway, that's all inside baseball stuff. This one is just a bad typist. Okay. So, uh, just, I don't know how to describe this. It's just like a Ford truck or a Cadillac. It's just smooth and reliable, nothing too fancy, not super snappy, but so comfortable. One thing that does come to mind is I worked on this machine. I worked on two of these at the same time. This right here is a, um, what they call the touch control. And you can see this one, it, it, it moves, but it's kind of just, it's springing over to uh, the light position. Uh, in reality, this is kind of like the door close button on an elevator. Um, nobody knows if it actually works, but people who are type A uh, like to push it <laughs> if they're in a hurry, it, just to give them something to do. Sometimes these uh, spring, there's a spring that this is connected to in the linkage. Sometimes these really still do have an impact uh, on the typing touch, but this one, it really doesn't. We have set the typing uh, touch pretty much one time and we're done. Which brings up another repair question. When I got this, um, I was so frustrated at the end as I'm doing my sample testing that the ribbon vibrator wasn't working. The vibrator is this little guy here that goes up and down as you type. Okay, well I think if we leave this on the, on the ground there, Kevin, that would be a little bit better off. Why don't we do that? So um, 
Anyway, this is the ribbon vibrator. It goes up and down as you type. And if you put it into the red color selector, it goes up even further, okay? Because you want your type slug to hit on the red section. But the problem was, the ribbon vibrator would go up and it would just stay there. And it would, wouldn't move and it was just so frustrating. I thought that the linkage had broken. Yeah, that's definitely bad, Kevin. And so just for anyone else who may be struggling with something like that, I'll share this little bit of knowledge. This, um, this spring right here, this innocuous little spring, which I'll point to you. Wait. Yeah, I think you can see it, Kevin. There you go. All right, right next to the ribbon color selector decal. That spring was completely missing, and it took me quite a bit of a while to figure that out. So we oh, put no. a, a replacement oh, no. spring in there, and that uh, fixed the uh, vibrator problem. Because what that does is, here's our scratching, that is connected over here to this little mechanism here. And I don't know the official name. I want to say universal bar, but I could be universally wrong with that. As you type and you, you put pressure on the key, this rotates. And if there's no spring on that, po that point, it rotates and it stays fixed in one position. So the machine will type, but the vibrator will stay stuck in one position. All right. So anyway, if you're interested in repairing typewriters, that really made your day. And if you're not, you're like, hey, what's going on with this review? In any case, let's type up some pros and cons, and we'll give you our final overview of this Sterling typewriter. Bye, guys. So as we kind of come to a conclusion of this quick overview, our thoughts on the pros and cons. What are the first con, Kevin? Or first pro? Uh, Always first. start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first pro is it's smooth. Smooth and fully featured, that's right. So we're talking about the typing touch. We also could apply that to the overall looks. Uh, one of the main characteristics of this design element is that the ribbon cover is a little bit more squared, a little more squashed. Not quite so much as the Pencrest Caravelle, which is also uh, a JC Penny branded version of this typewriter, which has an even more squared off um, ribbon cover. But it definitely is flatter than the previous uh, incarnation in the 5A. What else, Kevin? Classics. Um, classic styling updated for the modern mid 60s guys. All right, modern mid 60s. Yeah, so we're talking, what does that mean? Well, we've got these really cool diamond pattern. We've got this uh, etched cross hatching. We have the white keys. Um, sometimes you'll see these sterlings labeled as classics, and I've even seen one which is called a Riviera, which is uh, more rare than I thought. S um, Smith Corona really uh, was making the most of its marketing, it always did, uh, which as a marketer I definitely appreciate. Um, so they came in a lot of different names, a lot of different varieties for the same um, same machine. What's another pro, Kevin? Um, another pro is it's dedicated one and plus. That's right. And that's kind of uh, already been said with the fully featured aspect of it with tabs, with uh, paper bail, with uh, uh, ribbon color selector switch, all the things you might expect to have on a, on a typewriter. Um, and we'll just cover that up too. So user settable tabs. That's nice to be able to set your tabs from the front uh, with just a press of a button to set and clear. One trick, if you're new to typewriters, you can do, if you want to clear all your tabs, you can just hold the clear down and then walk through your uh, carriage and that wipes them all out. That also gave me an opportunity to let you hear the bell. The bell on this particular variant is outstanding. It's really strong. They almost always work. I've worked on a lot of typewriters. And the ones on the Sterlings are just magnificent because they are so uh, resonant and clear. I really, I really like them. They also linger. They linger. That's yeah. That's kind of part of that resonance thing. So, um, pretty, pretty neat. All right. So we had to come up with a cons, and uh, the only thing I could really kind of say is a play on words, and that's the Dawn Gray. Isn't always great. Great smiley face. Smiley face. Okay. Yeah. So um, actually, I do like the Dawn Gray. Um, uh, I don't know where Dawn, you know, Dawn Gray, it's interesting. I guess it's sort of a twilight uh, illusion, uh, but without the vampires and the werewolves. But, um, you know, I we, we custom painted this one, and uh, let's you look at the paint there. Let's look at the white paper. Um, we custom painted I just love two-tone typewriters. I think they didn't make enough in the 1960s and 50s, so I've kind of made it my mission to make some more. Uh, and with that, I'm also going to show you another one that we have made uh, that you might hopefully enjoy as well. All right, I mentioned uh, loving two-tone typewriters and making more. And uh, here we go here with a cream and dawn gray variant of our Smith Corona Sterling. This is actually a 1963 version on the right, and the serial number to high hundred thousands. And this is a 1964 variant, no changes whatsoever. Um, one little thing you may notice if you are an eagle-eyed collector is, wait, what's going on with this number one key over here? Why does this one have a black number one key? 
And if you're even more familiar, you say, well, that looks a heck of a lot like a change of type key. <clears throat> and you would be absolutely correct. Uh, that is because this machine came to us completely missing the number one key cap. And we did not have a parts machine specifically for a Smith Corona Sterling, but we did have a Classic 12, which is itself a wonderful typewriter, but it had its own uh, insurmountable problems. And so I was able to lift off the number one key cap and put it on. And I think it's kind of neat, kind of cute in a way. It's kind of like an inside joke, if you will, among us typewriter aficionados to see uh, a incorrect uh, key, but it, I think it looks good and it certainly is better than having no keycap at all. In fact, if you wanted to, you can pop this keycap off and you could put another change of type key on there, but you cannot, of course, change the type slug. And it feels, that's a good question, Kevin. Um, it feels just absolutely the same. These are a little bit cupped, which is nice, and the change of type keys are flat, so it does have a tiny bit of a distinction. Um, kind of like some keyboards have a little n uh, knock in the uh, home row to let you center yourself and find a reference. You could do that, I suppose, with this uh, flat uh, change of type key. But I was talking about, like, um, if the key was sentient, how would it feel? Yes, it would probably be in a good mood, let's hope. A happy, sentient key and not being pounded right now. Yeah. All right, so one of the things we, I've also been asked about is uh, the cases, and I'm going to go get a case for a, a Sterling. These particular examples you see here in front of you uh, our custom painted cream and dawn gray and our custom painted, painted uh, strawberry and cream and dawn gray did not have a case. Uh, neither one came to us with a case and so we're going to use uh, some covers we have to help uh, keep these guys clean and dust free. But let me show you what a sterling case looks like. Alright, through the power of the internet we now have a Smith Corona sterling case. This one has not been cleaned so forgive its gross condition. but. It's the tr traditional Samsonite. Why that's notable is this is sort of the first iteration of these. I think the 5A Sterling, which is something we might talk about, may have had this case as well, as opposed to the holiday case which preceded it. So that, that bears question. What's the 5A Sterling? The 5A Sterling, the last iteration from it, it was interesting because you had an overlap. You had two different Sterlings being sold at the same time. The 5AX Sterlings ran from 63 to 66, and the 5A Sterlings ran up until from 49 to 64. So 63 and 64, you had two different variants of the Sterling. And my understanding is the 63, 64, 5As, uh, you can tell them because they have the same traditional five body style, but they have white keys or cream and a white uh, paper table. So you kind of get many of the similar features, but not all of them because the 5As did not have the dedicated one uh, and the user shuttle tabs. So. You're probably wondering how we got case and type of Well, it just materialized out of a phone or something. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so this is a little bit rusty, made with care and made with skill rather, not so much care, made with skill and packed with care. And this one is a little bit rusty and we got all kinds of stuff going on. Here we have a felt piece, but uh, ignore all that and look at this really pretty spring green or what I always call awesome avocado. Uh, this is what they kind of look at when you first get them. What's notable about the case, if you're interested in the cases, you no longer have, uh, you have this um, self-adjusting mechanism here. It pushes against, it's made to push against the carriage uh, release levers and to force the carriage into the right position. Because you'll notice you no longer have a carriage centering um, lever on the uh, Sterlings. Normally you could lift up and it would center it and it would release, uh, disengage the carriage rack. But they've done away with that feature now because they have these uh, pushers, and especially this big piece right here, which pushes the carriage into the position where it wants it to be so that it's centered. It's kind of nifty. Um, I like them. They're very simple cases, but yeah. what more can you say about the case seat? Oof. It all has the same locking mechanism down here. You push either side, you push up to unlock. Rugged, robust aluminum Samsonite cases. And squeaky. So as we said, thank you so much for joining us on our adventure. This Sterling really is one of our favorite typewriters. Um, I try to get as many as I can whenever I see them. And uh, please don't compete against me. Please. <laughs> now that we've told you how great they are. Uh, it's just the modern incarnation of the Silent Super, which we also love, but in a variety of colors. And we love making them two tones. And we love... Um, this is a typewriter that has really maintained its value, just like the old saying, sound as a pound. Isn't that right, Kevin? Yep. Sound as a pound, and hopefully um, Pound Sterling will continue to 
exist with us now that the UK is no longer part of European Union, I guess the decision to retain the pound sterling was a good one. Happy New Year's! Please like and subscribe and share the video and comment about the typewriter. What a specific thing that you want to know about the typewriter. And also hit the bell button and subscribe.